In this movie, we'll use the brush tool to even out the coloring of the flesh tones, as well as knock down some of the shine on the model's forehead. And if you zoom in on the makeup underneath the model's eyes, you can see that it doesn't quite match the coloring of the natural skin tones. You can see it's even more evident over here on the left-hand side. So we're going to take care of that problem using the brush tool, which you'll find directly below the healing brush. And you can get to the tool by pressing the B key. And if for some reason you see some other tool in the slot, go ahead and click and hold on that tool and choose the brush tool from the flyout menu. Now I'm going to increase the size of my brush. If I was to start in just painting inside the image, I would paint with the foreground color, which by default is black. And so I'd create this fuzzy black brush stroke. Obviously that's not what I want. So I'll press Control Z or Command Z on the Mac to undo that change. However, I do want a fuzzy brush. So I'll right click inside the image. Make sure your hardness value is set to 0% for this effect to work. And then press the Enter key or the Return key on the Mac to hide that panel. What I'm gonna do is lift a flesh tone by pressing and holding the Alt key or the Option key on the Mac. And that gets me my eyedropper on the fly. And then I'll click inside the image to lift a flesh tone as you can see at the top of the circle. And here inside the color panel, I'm going to adjust my hue, saturation, and brightness values just a little bit. I want a hue value 15 degrees, that's perfect. The saturation should be more like 30%, and the brightness should be more like 60%. Now, if I paint a brush stroke, it will be in that color. However, we're not getting any interaction between the brush stroke and the image. So again, I'll press Control Z or Command Z on the Mac. What I need to do is assign a blend mode. So I'll go up here to the options bar and change the mode from normal to color. And that way we'll override the color of the makeup, but we'll keep all the surface detail, which is conveyed by luminosity. That is the luminance information. So I'll go ahead and choose color and then paint over this region like so. Now we're getting some colors that are awfully hot, as you can see, that is overly saturated in the shadow detail. So we need to break color into its two parts. I'll press Control Z or Command Z on the Mac to undo that change. If I go back to the blend mode pop-up menu, you'll see that there's two options above color, hue and saturation. Those are the ingredients that make up color. We were having a problem with saturation. So in other words, we want to keep the natural saturation values, in which case I'll select hue so that the hue is the only thing we're changing. And now I'm going to increase the size of my brush just a little bit more and paint inside of this region of makeup like so. And then I'll reduce the size of my cursor and paint over this little bit of makeup as well. It's a pretty subtle change so far. However, over here on the left-hand side, it's not going to be quite so subtle. So I'll pan over to that location, increase the size of my brush, and paint underneath the eye, and we get a more credible effect. So we can still tell that she's wearing makeup, but at least the makeup is the right color. All right, now I'm going to zoom out a little bit. You may recall that the model has some shine on her forehead and on her cheek over here on the left-hand side. What you might do to solve this problem is switch over to the burn tool. And then instead of burning the midtones, which is the default range, you'd burn the highlights instead. However, when you burn highlights in Photoshop, you usually get some pretty bad results because Photoshop doesn't have any real color information to work with inside those highlights. I'll go ahead and press Control Z or Command Z on the Mac to undo that change. Your better approach is to switch back to the brush tool. And let's lift a very light color from the forehead here. I'll alt click or option click at this location and that brightens up the foreground color significantly as you can see along the top of the circle. And once again, I'm gonna adjust my HSB values. I'll take the hue value up to 20 degrees and then I'll lift the saturation value to 15% and the brightness value should be around 85%. All right, now I'm gonna to switch to a different blend mode. Because we wanna darken, the best blend mode for our purposes will be multiply. I'll go ahead and select that mode Press the escape key so the mode is no longer active here on the PC. And then press the right bracket key a few times in order to increase the size of my brush and just paint along that highlight like so. I've gone way too far. Let's press Control Shift F, Command Shift F on the Mac in order to bring up the fade dialog box. I'll reduce the opacity to 50%. See how that looks. Might want to take it farther down actually. So I'll take it down to 30% in order to create the effect you see in the video. And then I'll click OK. And I might try it again, actually, paint up with a smaller brush stroke along the highlight and then press Control Shift F or Command Shift F on the Mac. And let's take the opacity value down to 20 percent. That looks pretty darn good. Now I'll click OK in order to accept that effect. Let's go ahead and do the same thing here in the cheek. So I'll just paint along the cheek and then I'll press Control Shift F. Let's start at 20 percent and see how things look. 
And then I'll go ahead and raise it to 30%. And that looks great. And notice, by the way, that Photoshop is smart enough to know that I use the multiply blend mode. So I could switch it out to a different mode if I wanted to on the fly. For example, if I wanted to color the cheek instead of darkening it, I would switch to the color mode. That's not what I want though. I'll go ahead and switch things back to multiply and then click OK to accept that change. Just a couple of other items that I might want to modify. By the way, you could change the opacity on the fly. So I could say, gosh, you know, I'll press the five key to reduce the opacity value to 50% and then I'll paint over this area. Problem is that it's easier to do the fade from the fade dialog box because you can see it happen as opposed to trying to anticipate what it's going to look like. So now I'll press control shift F, command shift F on a Mac. It shows me that my opacity value is 50%, which is awesome. I'll take it down to 30% and click OK. And then I'll paint along just under the left eyebrow. And actually that looks good at 50%. So I'll leave it as is. All right, now I'll switch back to the rectangular marquee tool. Let's go ahead and reset the view once again. And just to give you a sense of what we were able to accomplish here, I'll press the F12 key in order to revert the image to its saved appearance. And you can see that we have some awfully bright shine up on the forehead and this off color makeup, for example, under the left eye. And then if I press Control Z or Command Z on the Mac in order to reinstate my changes, the skin tones are looking a lot more organic to the model's natural coloring. And that's how you use the brush tool to adjust the coloring of a portrait shot here in Photoshop.